for unique being in an underwater tower of sorts. It makes this far more memorable than the last few levels. It is unfortunately the longest of this bunch, but it's not that much longer, so I'm putting it on top. 654, Lost Levels 9-4. World 9 of the Lost Levels might just be the strangest world of any Mario game. Every single level there is extremely bizarre. It feels like they just took the Minus World like garbage levels and put them in the game as actual content. I mean, you could just see why this is weird right off the bat, having the castle color scheme, but not indicating that it's underwater at all. The enemies here are also just on the ground, which you can swim over completely. Maybe yeah, it did a zero challenge. Yeah, the only other thing, which is a cool intro to the special world, but it immediately just teleports you into water. There is just so much out of place garbage here. Question mark blocks you can't hit, a few bill blasters, a hammer bro, buzzy beetles, and heck, even the piranha gimmick is all about dodging torpedo teds. I've honestly always liked this enemy, and this stage uses them pretty well. There's plenty of points in the level where it can be difficult to avoid them, as there's a lot of small corridors. And also, I'm just a big soda fan, I can't help myself. 639, Sunken Ghost Ship. Aesthetically, I love this level, taking place in a haunted ghost ship. You probably could have gotten that from the name. Sadly though, I really don't like how it handles the booze. They'll disappear and reappear in random spots, but there's no way of telling where they'll spawn back, and due to the slow underwater movement, it's impossible to react. Honestly, if I didn't love the stage's aesthetic so much, I would have placed it much, much lower. This does have a really cool ending though, being a large drop with a star onto this orb. This is the waste of time. There's not a lot of space in the water, so you only ever have to dodge one cheap cheap at a time. Due to it being partially above ground though, it gets to place highly in this underwater section of the video. 629, Forest Evolution 2. This is an underwater mage where you have to avoid a lot of cheap cheaps and urchins. Ignoring the underwater controls, it is somewhat enjoyable making your way through this stage due to the tight corridors and moving urchins. I was also lucky enough to have a secret exit that I really like. At one point in the maze, you'll end up with just how slow and long the raft ride is. While I guess technically you don't need to take it, it's a nightmare swimming through the complete darkness, so it's the only real viable way through here. While the water is infested with cheap cheaps, there are barely any enemies for those taking the raft. About a minute into the ride, there's some piranha plants, but but by that point, you're just kind of drained because this goes on for over three killing spine coasters. In this course, we get to ride a roller coaster in the dark. That obviously means this is faster than the last level, and luckily for us, one last thing I want to ask is literally what is the point of this switch? It creates three platforms and then nothing else. 616, Mario 3, 6 5. Okay, this level is just a bit stupid. The way you beat this level is sort of similar to 7 Tower, <laughs> but I still managed to die. The platforming here is also pretty straightforward. The only reason it's higher than some of the other secret levels in this game is because I think the blocks that get destroyed by fireball are likely nothing until you reach the top. Once you reach the vine, the rest of the level is just kind of basic. 606, Mondo. This is our first level to come from Mario World Super Secret World. I love this world because they title each of their stages with such hip words like tubular. Awesome. Way cool. <laughs> You think if Mario World can't reason it's low. All right, well, really, I just find the gimmick a bit lame. It's about rising and lowering water, which means that you have to go from jumping around to swimming. I don't think the level was you enter into the final face-off against Warp. And to be honest, I don't like it. Your goal is to throw vegetables in his mouth to kill him, and you have to avoid the bubbles. Oh my god, that sucks. I just don't really have fun with this. Do it well. Don't worry, Red Switch fans, 3-4 is much higher on the list. Anyway, the main problem here is that it's an auto-scroller, and since it has the red block gimmick, you have to beat it twice for the secret exit. That is especially not helped by this just being really boring. You have to ride on a spinning block, which can trip you up, but it's not too hard to stay on. Most enemies here are also pretty far out of the way, so it's not like they'll ever cause any issues. The end does doesn't even change that, really. Most of the red blocks are far away from the platform. It could have been cool if these new block spawning made it so we didn't have to use the platform, but sadly, this is an auto-scroller on top of the platform, so you can't go much faster. In fact, coming here the second time actually makes this is just as boring as the first, if not even more so. The paratroopers actually go over the blocks now I was looking for in a second playthrough. Now it's time to go on a bit of a Mario 2 streak. 592, Mario 2, 5-3. This level is all about bombs. It's so much above ground with bombs being dropped on you by birds. Then you go on two are my least favorite, then the bros are the first hand trap, and finally I like cheap cheaps the best. 576 I like these more because the platforming is a bit more interesting with it you want to be the most difficult of the two, which is why I put it on top. But yeah, featured he doesn't, this level. He doesn't care. Tree zone secret. <laughs> this level is all about stomping Koopas on top of small on. plants and below tree roots. There's not really much to this, but it was fun enough to navigate through. 571 Tree Zone 1. This is a very simple level where we just have to jump on 70 Super Mario Bros. 2 1. This is another pretty generic level, but less so than the ones we saw before, since there's a lot and several blocks to make the platforming more engaging. On top of Koopas, Buzzy Beetles, and Bullets, a lack of which means you have to run past this section as quickly as possible to collect it. That's a cute little level stand out. It's used to make jumping between and riding mushroom platforms more difficult. There's not many of them, but it's a good addition. My favorite part of this level comes right at the end with these two pipes. They both have pro stuck in here. So starting off, we have 525, Mario 3, 5 6. This level is all about parabeetles. I always love when these guys show up in levels. I mean, look how cute they are. Their gimmick is pretty interesting where you can land on their backs and they rise up as you stand on them. They only last for the first half of the level, though. The second half has its activated P switch and avoid a flame jump. 
Also, shout out to the Lakitu that does literally nothing because it spawns too close to the goal. Real proud of you. 524, Mario 3, 3-2. This you. is another level where you choose... So not every airship in the series has it, but a lot of them do, which is certainly the case in Mario 3. Well, I do... Boy. As for this airship specifically, I think it's the weakest of this game's bunch because it probably has the least amount to dodge. There are a few burners, rocky wrenches, and these weird spinning platform boss fights. This is against Iggy. That's not Iggy. Well, whoever it is, it doesn't matter since it's pretty much the most generic one of these fights it could be. 518, Mario 3, 6 airship. I basically have the exact same thoughts for this level, but it does a few things better. It has more complex platforming with these spinning platforms, it's shorter, and... Blue water. Okay, the real reason this is higher is because the level's boss is Lemmy. He is much more original because he uses bouncy balls as a projectile and also rides on top of one. I really like the idea behind him here. When I looked up a reference video for 4-3, it was split into two parts, which wasn't necessary at all. It's like four minutes in total, but still. As for the order, that was determined by the whole way of the Goomba. This is not an auto-scroller, but just feels really slow. This entire level takes place under the effect of a Wonder Flower, and we just don't like this transformation. All it does is make you slower and jump lower, though I guess you can now walk on spikes. This level, but I just don't find it that fun. It's pretty unique when you compare it to something like a water level that has the tower. These have always been some of my favorite enemies to avoid, so I quite like this. And shocker, if the tower ends with Goomba. When I went looking for the Goomba Village song I used for this segment, I found this song instead. It's absolutely pretty much everything about this level is just better. 491, Mario 3, 2 Airship. I think this level uses bullets and cannons the best of the airship so far. There are a lot of good places where you have to try and avoid them, like this fall through the semi solids The stage ends with a fight against Morton, who sadly isn't that unique, but at least his arena makes his fight slightly harder to navigate. 490, Mario 3, King of Star Coins, though, I'm not really a fan of the second, requiring us to hit an invisible block and go over the ceiling to find a pipe. We'll have a bit spawn here, which makes this fairly difficult. Once you reach the top, you get to face off against Ludwig. What makes him unique is his flutter jump, which can make it harder to predict what he'll actually lay on. If you make sure next So overall, there's some good content here. I would have given the platforms a bit of a speed boost, but otherwise, this would be decent. 479, the shark is the hoppy cat enemy, which jumps whenever Mario jumps. Okay. We're placed on the side of platforms and essentially act as projectiles you can shoot out to interact or in the overworld is extremely intimidating. First of these pretty interesting spinning blocks. Due to how they're shaped and spin, it can sometimes take some effort to actually climb them. I also really like how they were used for this spin. This level, of course, focuses on the titch- Hey, don't you mean fishy boot skins? I like the layout of this level just a bit more than the last, as the slopes and throwable blocks make it more interesting. 454, Chocolate Island, are falls on the stage, which don't really do anything, but they look cool. Also, shoutouts again to the Lakitu, who shows up at the end for 5 seconds, to Tree Zone 5. Honestly, for a large portion of this level, it really doesn't have much to do with trees at all. Not to say the general wish too. This is a pretty challenging level where you have to jump across several enemy filled platforms over a oh. Jump vertically out of the water to disrupt your jumps over the tree platforms. Near the end, we also get some seahorses to make things even more difficult. 449, Tree Zone 3. What we add this the old games didn't tap is the fact that you can actually steal this cloud here. Let's even use to collect the first star coin. Well, yeah, it does make these levels colorful blocks on track. You often have to wait for them to move into the right position, which puts you in danger of the last few spinings. This even ramps up by having three. They'll be attached to walls and launch at the player whenever they see them. I think it's a pretty good spin on this enemy genre. There are even big variants which are able to smash through a ton of blocks. This level uses them well by closing off the exit from the player and forcing them to touch a flower, causing the pipes to open, but also giving the senior bullet bills time to attack. Speaking of flowers, let's get to this wonder effect. This is honestly what brings the level down a bit. It was a really neat idea where you set sail on a ship and shoot cannonballs at the senior bullet bills in front of you. The problem is that this is an auto scroller and it legitimately lasts for an eternity. Mario 3 7 oh, there's a ceiling. This level takes place in also desert with me back. Okay. Going down any of them will bring you to a water section, which I obviously try to avoid as much as I can. While sticking to the surface, this has us dodge a lot of nipper and piranha plants. Eventually you'll get trapped into this hole where you can't jump out because it's all blocked off by invisible no block. The streak of first blocks is standing on. The first and last star coin both require the power up to collect, which perfectly shows off its ability to push upward. There's really not much more to this level, but it acts as a good opener, especially for the power. 401, NSMB2, 1-1. There are two main focuses of this new gold brick mechanic. If you hit a gold block enough times quickly, you'll be able to put a gold brick on your head to collect more coins here, but my favorite is definitely the ground pound one because it shows how ground pounding can be fast enough and it puts you into an underground section. Overall, I think I like Wii 1-1. Yeah, this one is definitely aided a bit by nostalgia, but I also think this is legitimately the best one here. It focuses on two main things as well. First is the rolling hill Mario 3, 3-7. Spikes completely fill the stage and throw spike balls at you, which works differently from the spike balls a little bit faster. 383, Vanilla Secret 2. This level has a really unique green look for it. I don't think the second half of this quite lives up to the first half. It's a lot easier with fewer and more random enemies. At least you get to kill these tinies with a piece There are even a few high up Koopas that kick shells down onto the bridge. It's pretty difficult to make it through here damage just due to how the Koopas fly, but that's what makes the stage 5-2. I wouldn't say this level has that strong of a theme, but it remains fun regardless. The stage starts with a ton of enemies that you need to avoid. There's several of these climbers. First off, it's enjoyable to avoid Sniffit shooting at you, but the main event comes at the top. This gives you time to react. After that, you just have to fight Birdo for the ending, but that drop was so cool that I had to bring this stage up. 380, Tubular. This is one of the most infamous levels in the entire. Before that, I like those levels, and this just improves the puzzle. I can't do this room! I can't! 
happy to wish the Oh my god, I'm going to be in a bad mood for the rest of this level. Just because that one... ...to jump between small drop platforms, and you even use them to climb or some excuse to play this level twice. 327, Donut Plains 3. This is just a real spin around a block, some that spin on a track, and some that move along a track. 319, we for Ghost House. The main gimmick for this level are just stupid. As you may expect, there are a few hidden things behind these. Not only is one of the star coins hidden, but the door for the secret exit is... Oh my god, okay. Give me a break after this, please. These boxes take so long to sink, and it's... I think they work fairly well. All I have for this level. 300, Pipe Rock Plateau Palace. This is a pretty solid one. Oh no, wait, sorry, first palace, my apologies. The main idea here is that the level sort of generates as you run through. Pipes will suddenly appear from the ground, and Bone Goombas will spawn out of annoyance. As for the Wonder Flower, this is... It just causes pipes to fall. Definitely one of the less exciting effects, but it still does make it- They have creative gimmicks and also prevent cheese by giving Junior a bit of invincibility. Unfortunately though, he's basically- You get tired of him fast. Honestly, Mario Wonder might have the worst boss selection since the lost levels. As for this first fight, it'll start normal, but- music is still too bad. Yeah, I got a hundred more. Woohoo! Wait, was that it? Wow. Just for clarifying that, we did it. Oh, that bro. Okay. Isn't that supposed to be the hard room? What? That was that was the hard room. Why was why was the uh, okay whatever. That was not hard. I did it. In an island in the sun. Yeah, yeah. We fun. And it makes me feel so high. If Greg was here, he would love it. It was so fine, I can't control my brain. Oh, wow.